Irene wants grandchildren, and she wants them now, Nina warned as we sat in the bustling cafe, her words cutting through the morning chatter like a knife. My name is Lila Montgomery, and I should have heeded that warning. Instead, I laughed it off, stirring another packet of sugar into my latte. Come on, Nina. I haven't even met the guy yet. Nina leaned forward, her eyes serious. Trust me, Lila. Wade's great, but his mother, she's something else. Just be prepared. I nodded, only half listening. My mind was already racing with possibilities. A blind date set up by my best friend from college? It felt like the start of a rom-com, and I was ready for my happy ending. Later that evening, I found myself at a cozy Italian restaurant, nervously smoothing my dress as I waited for Wade to arrive. The door chimed, and there he was, tall, with kind eyes and a smile that made my heart skip a beat. Lila, he asked, approaching my table. I stood, extending my hand. That's me. You must be Wade. His handshake was firm, his palm warm against mine. It's great to finally meet you. Nina's told me so much. As we settled into our seats, the conversation flowed easily. Wade was charming, intelligent, and genuinely interested in my work as a teacher and my dreams of becoming a writer. By the time our entrees arrived, I was smitten. So, Wade said, twirling pasta around his fork, what made you agree to a blind date? I laughed. Honestly, I'm a hopeless romantic. Plus, Nina's judgment is usually spot on. Usually? Wade raised an eyebrow. Well, there was that one time in college when she convinced me to get bangs. That was a choice. We both burst out laughing, drawing glances from nearby tables. As our laughter subsided, Wade's expression softened. I'm glad you took the chance. I have a good feeling about this. The weeks that followed were a whirlwind. Wade and I were inseparable, stealing moments between my classes and his long hours at the finance firm. It felt like we'd known each other for years, not months. Six months after our first date, Wade proposed. It was simple and perfect, a picnic in the park where we'd shared our first kiss. As he slipped the ring on my finger, I felt like my heart might burst with happiness. I can't wait to start our life together, Wade murmured, pulling me close. I nestled into his embrace, savoring the moment. Me neither. The wedding planning began in earnest, and that's when I first met Irene Callahan. Wade's mother swept into our lives like a hurricane, all designer suits and opinions. Oh, darling, she cooed, air kissing my cheeks. We simply must discuss the guest list. And the venue? I have some suggestions. I glanced at Wade, hoping for support, but he just shrugged apologetically. Mom's excited, he whispered. As the weeks passed, Irene's excitement began to feel more like a takeover. She had opinions on everything from my dress to the napkin colors. But it was during a cake tasting that I got my first real glimpse of what Nina had warned me about. So, Lila, Irene said, delicately wiping frosting from her lips, when can we expect grandchildren? You're not getting any younger, you know. I nearly choked on my champagne. We, uh, haven't really discussed that yet. Irene's eyes narrowed slightly. Well, you should. Family is everything, dear. And the Callahan name must continue. Wade jumped in, sensing my discomfort. Mom, we just got engaged. Let's focus on the wedding first, okay? Irene waved her hand dismissively. Of course, of course. I'm just thinking ahead. Someone has to. As we left the bakery, I couldn't shake the uneasy feeling in my stomach. Wade squeezed my hand reassuringly. Don't worry about mom. She means well. I nodded, forcing a smile. But Nina's words echoed in my mind. Irene wants grandchildren. And she wants them now. I had a sinking feeling that our wedding was just the beginning of Irene Callahan's grand plans for our future. The doorbell chimed, its cheerful tone a stark contrast to the tension that immediately filled our home. I glanced at Wade, who was already rising from the couch, with a resigned look. That'll be mom, he said, heading for the door. I took a deep breath, stealing myself for another evening with Irene Callahan. It had been six months since our wedding, and her visits had become increasingly frequent and unbearable. 
darlings. Irene's voice rang out as she swept into our living room, designer handbags swinging from her arm. I brought a little something for dinner. She thrust a casserole dish into my hands, her eyes critically scanning our home. Oh, Lila, dear. Still haven't hung those curtains I suggested? This place could use a woman's touch. I bit my tongue, forcing a smile. Thanks for the casserole, Irene. We've been busy settling in. Too busy to make a proper home? Irene raised an eyebrow. Or perhaps too busy with that little hobby of yours? My jaw clenched. Teaching isn't a hobby, Irene. It's my career. Wade stepped in, his hand on my shoulder. Mom, we've talked about this. Lila's job is important to her. Irene waved dismissively. Of course, of course. But surely you're thinking about the future? About starting a family? The words hung in the air, heavy and suffocating. Wade and I exchanged glances, a silent conversation passing between us. Actually, Mom, Wade began. We wanted to talk to you about that. Lila and I have decided to wait a bit before having children. We want to focus on our careers and... Wait. Irene's voice rose an octave. But darling, you're not getting any younger. And the Callahan name... We'll still be there when we're ready. I interjected firmly. Irene's eyes narrowed, her gaze shifting between us. I see. Well, I suppose some people aren't cut out for the sacrifices of motherhood. The barb stung, and I felt Wade tense beside me. But before either of us could respond, Irene was already moving on, chattering about the latest country club gossip. As we sat down to dinner, the tension remained palpable. Irene dominated the conversation, peppering us with questions about our plans and not so subtly hinting at her disappointment. You know, she said, delicately dabbing her mouth with a napkin. Caroline, you remember Caroline, don't you? Wait, she just had the most beautiful baby boy, barely 30 and already embracing motherhood. Wade choked on his wine. Mom, why are you bringing up my ex-girlfriend? Irene shrugged innocently. Oh, I just ran into her the other day. Such a lovely girl. Always knew what she wanted in life. I gripped my fork tightly, knuckles turning white. I know what I want in life too, Irene. A fulfilling career, a happy marriage, and children when we're ready. But dear, Irene leaned forward, her voice sickly sweet. How can you have a happy marriage if you're denying Wade the family he deserves? That's enough. Wade's voice was sharp, surprising us all. Mom, I love you, but you need to stop. Lila and I are happy. Our choices are our own. A tense silence fell over the table. Irene's face flushed, a mix of anger and embarrassment. I see, she said coldly. Well, if that's how you feel, perhaps I should go. As Wade walked his mother to the door, I slumped in my chair, exhausted. When he returned, his face was drawn. I'm so sorry, Lila, he said, pulling me into an embrace. I should have stood up to her sooner. I leaned into him, grateful for his support but worried about the future. It's okay. But Wade, this can't keep happening. Your mother. I know, he sighed. I'll talk to her. Make her understand. As we cleaned up dinner, I couldn't shake the feeling that this was just the beginning. Irene's words echoed in my mind, her disapproval a constant presence. I loved Wade, but I wonder how long we could withstand the pressure cooker of his mother's expectations. Little did I know Irene Callahan was just getting started. The two pink lines on the pregnancy test seemed to mock me. I sat on the edge of the bathtub, a mixture of joy and dread swirling in my stomach. We hadn't planned this, but life had other ideas. Wade, I called out, my voice shaky. He appeared in the doorway, concern etched on his face. What's wrong, Lila? Wordlessly, I held up the test. His eyes widened, a slow smile spreading across his face. Where? We're having a baby? I nodded, tears welling up. Wade pulled me into a tight embrace, his excitement palpable. This is amazing, Lila. We're going to be parents. As he held me, I couldn't shake the nagging thought. How would Irene react? We didn't have to wait long to find out. Despite our agreement to keep the news private for a while, Wade couldn't resist sharing it with his mother. The next day, our doorbell rang incessantly. Darlings, Irene burst in, 
arms laden with shopping bags. I came as soon as I heard the wonderful news. I shot way to look, but he just shrugged apologetically. Irene swept past us, depositing her bags on our coffee table. I've brought some essentials, she announced, pulling out tiny onesies and baby books. Oh, and we simply must discuss the nursery. I'm thinking a Callahan family theme. Mom, Wade interjected. It's still early. We haven't even told Lila's family yet. Irene waved dismissively. Nonsense. It's never too early to start planning. Now, Lila dear, you'll need to cut back on work. Stress is terrible for the baby. I bristled. Actually, Irene, I plan to continue teaching. My doctor says it's perfectly safe. Her smile tightened. Well, I'm sure you know best. Though in my day, we prioritized our children over careers. The weeks that followed were a whirlwind of doctor's appointments and unsolicited advice from Irene. She insisted on accompanying us to every checkup, critiquing everything from my diet to my choice of prenatal vitamins. Lila, darling, she said one afternoon, eyeing my outfit. Don't you think it's time for some proper maternity clothes? You're carrying precious Callahan cargo, after all. I gritted my teeth, forcing a smile. I'm comfortable in what I'm wearing, Irene. Wade, sensing the tension, tried to change the subject. Mom, did you see the ultrasound pictures? The baby's getting so big. Irene's face softened momentarily. Yes, it's wonderful. Though I do hope it's a boy. The Callahan name must continue. I felt a sharp pain in my abdomen, wincing slightly. Wade noticed immediately. Lila, are you okay? I'm fine, I assured him, though the pain persisted. Just a little cramping. Irene's eyes narrowed. Are you sure? Perhaps you've been overexerting yourself. I told you to cut back on work. Before I could respond, another wave of pain hit, more intense this time. I doubled over, panic rising in my chest. Wade, I gasped, something's wrong. The next few hours passed in a blur of ambulance sirens and hospital corridors. Through it all, I clung to Wade's hand, praying silently. But sometimes, prayers go unanswered. I'm so sorry, the doctor said gently. There was nothing we could do. The words hung in the air, heavy and final. I felt numb barely registering Wade's quiet sobs beside me. And then, cutting through the fog of grief, came Irene's voice. Well, she said, her tone oddly detached, these things happen. Perhaps next time you'll be more careful, Lila. I stared at her in disbelief, the pain in my heart giving way to a white-hot anger. Wade tensed beside me. Mom, he said, his voice low and dangerous, I think you should leave. Irene looked shocked. But darling, I'm only trying to help. Lila needs to understand. Now, Wade insisted, standing up. Please, just go. As Irene left, her heels clicking down the hospital corridor, I felt the first crack form in the foundation of our family. The baby we'd lost had been real, a tiny spark of hope. But in its absence, all I could see was the chasm growing between us and the woman who should have been its grandmother. I turned to Wade, tears streaming down my face. Take me home, I whispered. Please, just take me home. The first note arrived on a Tuesday, slipped under our front door like a poisonous snake. I almost missed it in my rush to get to school, but the crisp white envelope caught my eye. No return address, just my name in neat, unfamiliar handwriting. With trembling fingers, I tore it open. Your failure cost an innocent life. How do you live with yourself? The words blurred as tears filled my eyes. I crumpled the note, my chest tight with a mixture of grief and anger. Who could be so cruel? I didn't tell Wade. He was already walking on eggshells around me, and I couldn't bear to add to his worry. Instead, I threw myself into work, hoping to drown out the echo of those hateful words. But the notes kept coming, each one more vicious than the last, always appearing when I least expected them. In my mailbox at school, tucked into the windshield of my car, even slipped into my grocery bags. You don't deserve to be a mother. The Callahan legacy dies with you. Wade would be better off without you. With each note, my paranoia grew. 
I found myself looking over my shoulder constantly, jumping at every unexpected sound. Sleep became elusive, and dark circles formed under my eyes. Wade noticed, of course. Lila, honey, are you okay? He asked one night, his brow furrowed with concern. You seem on edge lately. I forced a smile, just tired. End of the semester, you know how it is. He nodded, but I could see the doubt in his eyes. We were drifting apart, the space between us in bed growing wider with each passing night. As the harassment continued, a nagging suspicion took root in my mind. The timing, the personal nature of the attacks, it all pointed to one person. But I couldn't bring myself to voice my fears to Wade. How could I accuse his mother without proof? One evening, as I was grading papers in our study, Wade's phone buzzed on the desk. A text from Irene lit up the screen. Darling, don't forget dinner tomorrow night. I have a surprise for you both. My stomach churned. Irene's surprises were rarely pleasant these days. But it was Wade's response that made my blood run cold. Mom, please. We talked about this. Lila's still not ready for big gatherings. I stared at the screen, a mix of gratitude and frustration washing over me. Wade was trying to protect me, but why couldn't he just tell his mother to back off completely? The next day, another note appeared, this time in my desk drawer at school. You're tearing this family apart. Do the right thing and leave. Something inside me snapped. I grabbed my phone and dialed Nina's number with shaking hands. Nina, I need your help, I said as soon as she answered. I think, I think Irene is behind these notes. There was a pause on the other end. Oh, Lila, Nina sighed. I was afraid something like this might happen. What do you need? I need to prove it's her, I said, my voice stronger now. And I need to make Wade see what she's really like. As Nina and I hatched a plan, I felt a glimmer of hope for the first time in weeks. But that hope was quickly overshadowed by a new fear. What if Wade didn't believe me? What if he chose his mother over me? That night, as Wade and I prepared for bed in silence, the weight of unspoken words hung heavy between us. I watched him, this man I loved, and wondered how much longer we could go on like this. Wade, I said softly, breaking the silence. We need to talk about your mother. He tensed, avoiding my gaze. Lila, please. Not tonight. Then when? I pressed, frustration bubbling up, because this can't go on. Something has to change. Wade sighed, running a hand through his hair. I know. I just, I don't know how to fix this. As we lay in bed, backs turned to each other. I made a silent vow. I would uncover the truth, no matter the cost. For my sake, for Wade's, and for the future we dreamed of together. Irene Callahan had no idea what she was up against. The Callahan family barbecue was in full swing when we arrived. The sprawling backyard of Irene and Jasper's estate was dotted with familiar faces, the air filled with laughter and the smell of grilled meat. Wade squeezed my hand reassuringly as we made our way through the crowd. Darlings, Irene's voice cut through the chatter. She glided towards us, a vision in a floral sundress. So glad you could make it. Wade, there's someone I'd love for you to catch up with. Before I could process what was happening, Irene had steered Wade away, leaving me alone. I scanned the crowd, feeling increasingly out of place when a familiar face caught my eye. Lila. Nina pushed through the throng, relief evident on her face. Thank God you're here. I was about to text you a warning. Warning? I asked, dread pooling in my stomach. What's going on? Nina's eyes darted around before she leaned in close. Caroline's here. Wade's ex. Irene invited her. The world seemed to tilt on its axis. I steadied myself against a nearby table, my mind racing. Where? I managed to choke out. Nina nodded towards a group near the pool. There, laughing at something Irene had said, stood a statuesque blonde. Even from a distance, I could see why she'd caught Wade's eye years ago. Lila, Wade's voice startled me. He appeared at my side, looking uncomfortable. Mom wants us to come say hello to someone. I knew what was coming, but it didn't make it any easier when Irene practically shoved Caroline in front of us. Wade, 
You remember Caroline, of course. Irene gushed. And Caroline, this is Lila Wade's wife. The pause before wife was brief, but unmistakable. Caroline's smile was polite, but her eyes were calculating as she shook my hand. So nice to finally meet you, Lila. I've heard so much about you. Funny, I replied, forcing a smile of my own. I can't say the same. An awkward silence fell over the group. Wade cleared his throat. Caroline, it's been a while. How have you been? As they fell into conversation, with Irene eagerly interjecting, I felt myself fading into the background. I watched as Caroline laughed at Wade's jokes, touched his arm, and reminisced about their shared past. Irene beamed at them, occasionally shooting pointed glances my way. They make such a lovely couple, don't they? An elderly, and I vaguely recognized, sidled up to me. It's a shame things didn't work out between them. But who knows? Maybe it's not too late. I excused myself abruptly, needing to escape. I found myself in Irene's meticulously maintained rose garden, trying to catch my breath. Lila. Wade's voice came from behind me. Are you okay? I whirled around, anger and hurt bubbling to the surface. Am I okay? Your mother invited your ex-girlfriend to a family event and has been parading her in front of everyone like some sort of replacement for me. And you've done nothing to stop it. Wade's face fell. I'm sorry, I didn't realize. Didn't realize? I cut him off. Or didn't want to see it. Wade, your mother has been trying to drive me away since day one. And now this? It's humiliating. Before Wade could respond, a rustle in the nearby bushes caught our attention. Irene emerged, her face a mask of innocence. Oh, there you are. I was just looking for you, too. Caroline was hoping to get a photo with Wade for old time's sake. Something inside me snapped. No, I said firmly, surprising both Wade and Irene. No more photos. No more walks down memory lane. This ends now. Irene's facade cracked for a moment, a flash of anger crossing her face before she composed herself. Lila, dear, I'm sure I don't know what you mean. I'm only trying to make everyone feel welcome. By inviting Wade's ex and treating her like the daughter-in-law you wish you had? I shot back. I see right through you, Irene. And I'm done playing your games. I turned to Wade, whose face was a mix of shock and dawning realization. I'm going home. You can stay if you want, but I won't be a part of this charade any longer. As I walked away, head held high, I heard Irene's hushed, urgent whispers to Wade. But for the first time in months, I felt strong. I had finally stood up to Irene Callahan, and I was ready for whatever came next. Little did I know, Irene's machinations were far from over, and the true test of our marriage was yet to come. The manila envelope sat on our kitchen table, innocuous yet menacing. My hands trembled as I reached for it, knowing its contents would change everything. Nina had come through, her investigative skills proving invaluable in uncovering the truth I'd long suspected. Lila. Wade's voice called from the hallway. I'm home. Listen about yesterday at my parents. He stopped short as he entered the kitchen, taking in my rigid posture and the envelope before me. What's that? I took a deep breath. The truth, Wade. About your mother. His brow furrowed. What are you talking about? Wordlessly, I opened the envelope and spread its contents across the table. Surveillance photos, phone records, and most damning of all, drafts of the cruel notes I'd been receiving, all in Irene's handwriting. Wade's face drained of color as he sifted through the evidence. This can't be real, he muttered, shaking his head. My mother wouldn't. She would. I cut in, my voice steady despite the storm of emotions inside me. She has. Wade, your mother has been systematically trying to destroy our marriage since day one. He slumped into a chair, running his hands through his hair. I knew she was overbearing, but this, this is insane. It gets worse, I said, sliding a final document towards him. It was a text conversation between Irene and Caroline, planning their chance encounter at the barbecue. Wade's eyes widened as he read, disbelief giving way to anger. She set that whole thing up? God, Lila, I'm so sorry. I had no idea. I reached across the table, taking his hand. 
I know you didn't. But Wade, we can't ignore this anymore. Your mother needs to be confronted. He nodded slowly, a resolve settling over his features. You're right. We'll go together. Tonight. The drive to the Callahan estate was tense, the weight of what we were about to do hanging heavy between us. As we pulled up the long driveway, I saw Irene framed in the doorway, her perfect hostess smile in place. Darlings, she called out. What a lovely surprise. Come in, come in. We followed her into the ornate living room, where Jasper sat reading the newspaper. He looked up, surprise registering on his face at our unexpected visit. Mom, Dad, Wade began, his voice tight. We need to talk. Irene's smile faltered for a moment before she recovered. Of course, dear. What about? I stepped forward, placing the envelope on the coffee table. About this, Irene. About your campaign to destroy our marriage. The room fell silent. Jasper lowered his newspaper, looking bewildered. Irene's face was a mask of innocence, but I could see the calculation in her eyes. Lila, dear, I'm sure I don't know what you mean, she said smoothly. What is all this? Wade opened the envelope, spreading out the evidence as he had done in our kitchen. It's proof, Mom. Proof that you've been harassing Lila, trying to drive her away. The notes, the setup with Caroline. How could you do this? Irene's facade cracked, her lips thinning into a hard line. How could I? How could I not? She's all wrong for you, Wade. She can't give you the family you deserve, the legacy you're meant to have. That's not for you to decide. Wade shouted, his anger finally breaking through. Lila is my wife. I love her. And if you can't accept that then, then what? Irene sneered, her true colors finally showing. You'll choose her over your own family? Over the mother, who gave you everything? The room fell silent, all eyes on Wade. I held my breath, my heart pounding. This was the moment of truth, the culmination of months of pain and doubt. Wade looked at me, then back at his mother. His voice was low but firm when he spoke. Yes. If that's what it takes, then yes. I choose Lila. Irene recoiled as if she'd been slapped. Jasper stood, finally finding his voice. Irene, what have you done? But Irene wasn't listening. Her eyes were locked on Wade, disbelief and fury warring on her face. You ungrateful. That's enough. I interrupted, my voice stronger than I felt. We're done here, Irene. Stay away from us. Both of us. As we turned to leave, I caught a glimpse of Irene's face. The mask had fallen completely, revealing the desperation and anger beneath. I knew this wasn't over, not by a long shot. But for now, we had won. Wade had chosen me, and together, we would face whatever came next. The days following our confrontation with Irene were a whirlwind of emotions. Wade oscillated between anger at his mother's betrayal and guilt over not believing me sooner. I found myself walking on eggshells, unsure of how to navigate this new reality. One evening, as we sat in tense silence over dinner, Wade's phone buzzed incessantly. He ignored it at first, but the persistent vibrations eventually wore him down. It's mom, he said, his voice tight. She's been calling nonstop. I set down my fork, studying his face. Are you going to answer? Wade sighed, running a hand through his hair. I don't know, Lila. She's still my mother. The words hung in the air between us, heavy with implication. I swallowed hard, pushing down the fear that threatened to overwhelm me. Do what you need to do, Wade. He nodded, standing up and walking to the living room for privacy. I remained at the table, straining to hear snippets of the conversation. Mom, I can't just... Wade's voice was low, but I could hear the frustration. No, you don't understand. What you did was unforgivable. There was a long pause, and then Wade's tone changed, softening slightly. I know you think you were doing what's best, but my heart raced. Was he wavering? After everything we'd been through, could Irene still manipulate him? I couldn't bear to listen anymore. I retreated to our bedroom, my mind a chaotic swirl of thoughts. What if Wade chose his mother after all? What would become of us? Hours passed, and still Wade didn't come upstairs. 
I tossed and turned, sleep eluding me. Finally, as the first light of dawn crept through the curtains, I heard his footsteps on the stairs. Wade entered the room, looking exhausted. He sat on the edge of the bed, his shoulders slumped. Lila, he began, his voice hoarse. We need to talk. I sat up, bracing myself for the worst. Okay. My mother. She wants to make amends. She's asked us to come to dinner tonight. Says, she has something important to tell us. I felt the blood drain from my face. Wade, you can't be serious. After everything she's done. I know, he interrupted, holding up a hand. I know it sounds crazy, but dad called too. He says mom's been a mess since we left. That she's realized the gravity of what she's done. I shook my head in disbelief. And you believe them? Wade met my eyes, his gaze steady. I believe we owe it to ourselves to hear them out. If there's any chance of healing this rift, don't we have to try? Part of me wanted to scream, to remind him of every cruel note, every manipulative action. But the larger part, the part that loved Wade and wanted our marriage to work, knew we had to face this head on. Okay, I said finally. We'll go. But Wade, this is it. If she can't accept us, accept me, then we're done. For good. He nodded solemnly. I understand. And Lila? I'm with you. No matter what. That evening, we found ourselves once again on the doorstep of the Callahan estate. Jasper answered the door, his face a mix of relief and apprehension. Thank you for coming, he said, ushering us inside. Irene's in the dining room. As we entered, I saw Irene sitting at the head of the table. She looked smaller somehow, her usual impeccable appearance slightly disheveled. When she saw us, she stood abruptly. Wade, Lila, she said, her voice trembling slightly. Thank you for coming. Please sit down. We took our seats, the tension in the room palpable. Irene cleared her throat, her hands fidgeting with a tablecloth. I owe you both an apology, she began. What I did was inexcusable. I was so focused on what I thought was best for Wade, for our family, that I lost sight of what truly matters. I felt Wade stiffen beside me, his hand finding mine under the table. Irene continued, her eyes glistening with unshed tears. Lila, I treated you abominably. I was threatened by your strength, your independence. I see now that those are the very qualities that make you perfect for my son. She turned to Wade. And you, my darling boy. I nearly destroyed your happiness with my meddling. Can you ever forgive me? The room fell silent, all eyes on Wade. I held my breath, knowing that his next words would determine the course of our future. Wade squeezed my hand, then looked directly at his mother. Mom, he began, his voice steady. What you did was more than just meddling. You tried to tear apart my marriage, the life I've chosen. I love you, but I love Lila too. And if you can't accept that, accept us, then I'm afraid. Irene sob cut him off. Please, she whispered. I'll do anything. I can't lose you, Wade. Either of you. As Wade opened his mouth to respond, I realized we were standing on the precipice of a monumental decision. Whatever came next would change our lives forever. The autumn breeze rustled through the leaves as Wade and I stood hand in hand outside the adoption agency. Six months had passed since that fateful dinner with Irene, and our lives had transformed in ways we never imagined. Ready? Wade asked, giving my hand a gentle squeeze. I nodded, taking a deep breath. As I'll ever be. Inside, we were greeted by M.S. Patel, our caseworker. Her warm smile put me at ease as we settled into her office. I have wonderful news, she began, her eyes twinkling. We've found a match for you, a baby girl due in two months. My heart soared as Wade wrapped an arm around me, his own eyes glistening with tears of joy. As M.S. Patel shared the details, my mind wandered to the journey that had brought us here. The pain, the struggles, the near dissolution of our marriage, it all seemed like a distant nightmare now. After that dinner, Irene had kept her word. She'd sought therapy, working to understand and overcome her controlling behavior. It wasn't an easy road, filled with setbacks and moments of doubt, but slowly, 
we'd begun to rebuild trust. I remember the day Irene had come to me, alone, her usual polished exterior stripped away. Lila, she'd said, her voice trembling. I know I can never fully make amends for what I've done, but I want you to know that I see you now. I see the strength and love you bring to Wade's life, to our family, and I'm truly sorry for ever trying to come between you. It had taken time, but those words had marked the beginning of a new chapter for all of us. MS. Patel's voice brought me back to the present. Now, there's just one more thing, she said, sliding a folder across her desk. The birth mother has a request. Wade and I exchanged glances, anxiety creeping in. She'd like to meet you both before making her final decision. Relief washed over me. Of course, I said. We'd be honored. As we left the agency, plans in place for the meeting, I felt a surge of excitement and nervousness. What if she doesn't like us? I voiced my fear as we walked to the car. Wade stopped, turning to face me. Lila, she'll love you. How could she not? You're going to be an amazing mother. His words warmed me, chasing away the doubt. We're going to be amazing parents. I corrected him, smiling. That evening, as we shared the news with our families over dinner, a tradition we'd started to bring everyone together, I looked around the table in wonder. Nina, my steadfast friend, raised her glass in a toast. To new beginnings and the family we choose. Jasper, who had found his voice and become a strong ally, nodded in agreement. And to the love that brought us all together. And then there was Irene. She'd been quiet throughout the meal, but now she stood, her eyes meeting mine. Lila Wade, she began, her voice thick with emotion. I know I have no right to ask this, but... I hope that one day, this child will know me as her grandmother, that I'll have the chance to love her and support her, the way I should have done for you both from the beginning. The room fell silent, all eyes on me. I felt Wade tense beside me, ready to intervene if needed. But as I looked at Irene, I saw not the manipulative woman who had nearly destroyed us, but a person who had faced her demons and fought to change. I stood, crossing the room to stand before her. Irene, I said softly, taking her hands in mine, this child will need all the love she can get. And I think, I think having a grandmother who understands the value of family, of second chances, that's a precious gift. Tears spilled down Irene's cheeks as she pulled me into a tight embrace. Over her shoulder, I saw Wade watching us, his face a mixture of love and gratitude. As we all sat back down, the conversation flowing freely now, I felt a sense of peace settle over me. The road ahead would not be easy, parenthood never is, but we had built a foundation of love, forgiveness, and understanding that could weather any storm. Later that night, as Wade and I lay in bed, his hand resting gently on my stomach where our future daughter would soon rest, I realized that sometimes the family you choose and the one that chooses you can be the strongest of all. I love you, Wade murmured, pulling me close. I love you too, I whispered back, closing my eyes and dreaming of the new horizons that awaited us.